Whether we monarchist Brits like to admit it or not, the President of the United States is the single most important person in the world, commanding the world's mightiest military and holding the purse strings of its biggest economy. The President could end Israel's war in Gaza with a phone call or decide if Ukraine gets the backing it needs to beat Putin. At least that's the general idea. But the current Commander-in-Chief is 81, seemingly going on 181, after a lifetime of distinguished public service as a pragmatic politician and, in my view, a thoroughly decent human being, President Biden looks increasingly unfit for service. And with the president in visible decline, his re-election campaign is, well, transitioning. You might say its pronouns are changing before our very eyes. The two most important women in President Biden's life have been sent out to jumpstart the 2024 race. Wildly unpopular VP Kamala Harris said this... We've got 10 months to go until the election. Mm -hmm. And increasingly, and you've seen it even just this week, um, we are all starting to narrow in on what this election will mean. Yeah. And it's going to be the choice between what is about uh, respecting our democracy, what is about competence versus chaos. Well, the vice president is right. Competence is crucially important. But her own boss has trouble getting up the stairs and can't seem to find a way off a stage. His frequent verbal and physical stumbles are the subject of both comedy and concern. Most people responded with laughter and derision, for example, when First Lady Jill Biden said this about him. I see Joe every day. I see him out, you know, travelling around this country. I see his vigour. I see his energy. To those who say, I can't vote for Joe Biden, he's too old. What do you say? I say his age is an asset. Hmm. Energy and vigour. Not quite what I'm seeing. You can make a plausible case for the wise old statesman with a firm hand on the tiller, but campaigning on Biden's vigour may well fast-track Donald Trump, who does have a lot of vigour, to the White House. Now, at 77, Trump's no spring chicken himself, but with his diet-defying swagger and showmanship, most people, on his side, seem to be believing him when he says things like this. I feel like I'm about 35 years old. I actually feel better now than I did 30 years ago. Tell me, is that crazy? I feel better now. And I think cognitively I'm better than I was 20 years ago. I don't know why. That is a slightly more debatable subject, uh, Mr Trump, but a whopping 77% of Americans, both Republican and Democrats, believe that Biden is simply too old to run the country. Almost 70% think he's mismanaged the crisis at the southern border. Just 13% say they're financially better off on his watch. At this stage of his term, he's the least popular US president in recorded history. And this stuff matters. US politics is almost hysterically polarised to the rest of us outside America, but most voters are, in fact, ready to be persuaded. White working-class voters ditched the Democrats to propel Trump to office in 2016. Now more and more Hispanic and black voters are shifting Republican too. Biden says he's the only man who's ever beaten Trump, and that's true. But right now, he may be the only one who can lose to Trump in November. Well, I'm joined by my super PAC here in the studio in New York, co-host of The Breakfast Club, Charlemagne the God, host of The Rubin Report, Dave Rubin, and the Democrat strategist and Fox News contributor, Jessica Tarlov, who I could hear her lips pursing <laughs> as I read that it was monologue. That loud? <laughs> I could feel them pursing. I appreciate though. I saw you tempered it a bit. Whoever <clears throat> put it in the prompter was harsher than you were. I could feel the pursing. <laughs> I was raining back in real time. Um, let me start with you, Jessica, because I, I like Joe Biden personally. Yeah. I think he's got a lot of very admirable qualities as a human being. And his own story, you know, the fact he lost his wife and a baby when he was a, a, just a senator, he then lost another son. Anyone mm. that can do that and still do the job he's doing will always have my admiration. But there is no doubt he is in real trouble here. Is there any doubt? I mean, can you paint a picture that isn't as grim as the one I painted? Oh, I definitely can do that. And I've been preparing <laughs> for three and a half minutes. Uh, it's a good chance. I... I'm not going to start by denying that the age factor is massive in all of this. And I think that people's concerns as well about Kamala Harris and her readiness to take over informs that. If there was a hugely popular vice president kind of waiting in the wings, I think things might feel a bit different for people. But 81 is 81. There are some 81-year-olds. We all watch Warren Buffett, right? Mick Jagger is 80. Yes. Nearly 81. He would have a different kind of agenda for the country. But, yes, he does. <laughs> That'd be quite a popular right. one. Yeah, that would be pretty I, huh? I wouldn't hate it. Um, <laughs> but there is 
a problem going on right now with media coverage of the Biden presidency, and there are problems with the Biden campaign. What are the problems? So I'll start with media coverage. Everybody knows now that you want to print stories that get clicks, and negative stories are the ones that do it. Even people who are huge supporters of the president focus on all the polls that are negative. Mm -hmm. Most people wouldn't know that if you went to the Real Clear Politics homepage and clicked on polls, the average has Joe Biden down just one percentage point to Trump. You would think that he was getting trounced. You'd look at swing state polls, and you'd see that in a lot of the swing states, like Pennsylvania, for instance, mm -hmm. which is going to be a huge deal, He's up massively. We only talked about the fact that he was down in one Michigan poll last week. In terms of the economic news, the Wall Street Journal, our very own Wall Street Journal here at News Corp, um, had a hugely optimistic set of editorials out there. It's 62 percent of Americans think the next year, so 2024 election year, is going to be better for them. When are they going to go and vote? In November. That's a lot of time for this economic recovery to really settle in for people. But no one wants to talk about that. It's not popular. It's not good clickbait. The second part about the campaign, and this is where I think the Obama folks who have been perhaps too publicly critical, I think, of the Biden campaign, their ground game is not visible to folks. They don't feel like they're there in Nevada, in Arizona, in Georgia, in these states that we desperately need to win. And they are working on that. And I think that the president himself needs to be more visible. I, If I was working in the White House, I would have him out there all the time. I understand you might be risking would you, you see, a stumble. I would... I wouldn't. I do what they did with him last with time. People. I keep him keep him in a dungeon. I mean, Dave, look, <laughs> yeah. here's the thing. I think the problem is not excuse me, it's not his age. I think that Joe Biden's problem is the clear senility yeah. that's going with his age. Like I said, I met Mick Jagger last summer, absolutely bursting with the vim and vigor that Jill wants us to believe she sees right. in Joe. Look, Piers, do, do any of us sitting at this table or anyone watching this think that he could run one shift at McDonald's? And I don't mean that as a shot for someone that works at McDonald's. There well, is something a lot of senior cognitively... But, but I don't think he could. I think a lot of senior citizens could, because I don't think it's an age thing. I agree with you. It's a, it's a cognitive... Dame Joan ability. Collins at the Emmys stole the show. Yes. She's 90 years old. Good friend of mine. She looks about 50, and she has the mental acuity of a 50-year-old. She has vim and vigor. So, I, you know, Jill Biden is right to say it's about vim and vigor, but her husband doesn't exude it. Well, look, let's put it this way. You opened by saying something about ailing Joe Biden, yeah. and I thought, oh, I haven't looked at my phone in 20 minutes. Did something <laughs> else happen? It's a general <laughs> ailing. It's, it's ailing. Yes, we all know it. The wandering off when they put get him off the plane and the confusion. He literally on camera last, what was it, two years ago, said, let's go, let's go, Brandon. Mm -hmm. Like, something is not right. We all know it. And I would say respectfully, in terms of the polls and everything, People don't vote on what really matters. We vote on what we can feel, mm. right? And I think because of that, people are going, Donald Trump, he seems back. There's energy there, and there's just no energy with well, Biden. Trump, and nobody, Trump, nobody Trump, likes Kamala. That's but Trump has piece. lost every election except 2016. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, but, he's and, a loser. And, yeah, except, right, except, right to the point, the Democrats decided to finish him off with 91 criminal charges and thought, this will do him. Mm. He's down, he's wounded, and Precisely. we'll get him. And it's had the complete opposite effect. He has used that to play the martyr, the victim. It has fueled a resurgent Trump. And you cannot deny... I mean, I've seen people try to downplay what happened to Iowa. But if that had been Joe Biden, who'd done that at Iowa, you'd be saying, this is unbelievable. It's a landslide. It's amazing. He's killing them, right? Trump is back and I think will definitely be the nominee, regardless, unless there's some extraordinary twist of events. He's exuding the air of someone on a mission. He's got vim and vigour. And whether you love him or hate him, and it's equal doses with Trump, you've got to say, Trump v Biden in November? I could see Trump winning that.